Hi, my name is Jeff. I'm a software developer on Geocortex Workflow 5, and today I'm going to show you how to display a form using Workflow so that you can edit features in your layer. Let's get started. So I'm going to demo this for you today in the new Geocortex mobile viewer, which means the Esri objects that we're interacting with in this workflow are going to be from the ArcGIS.NET runtime, so you might notice a few slight differences from the JavaScript API. So to show our form, we're going to use a display form activity, and I've gone ahead and pre-configured some activities in this workflow just to save time. So in our display form activity, we're not going to configure any form elements, and that is because we want to dynamically display the form depending on the layer that we have. So to set the dynamic form elements, we're going to use the load event handler in the forms header. So if we look in here, the first thing we need to do is get our layer using the get layer activity, and I'm gonna be using a web map that has a layer with the ID service request 8759. So that's going to get our layer and then the next thing we want to do is add a form element for each field in the layer so we're going to iterate over the fields in the layer so you can see uh, we're going layer.featuretable.fields and this feature table is a .netism so then the first thing we're going to do in our for each loop is just assign the field to a variable so that we don't have to access the for each loop current item every time so this is just a create value activity and the next thing we want to do is check if the field is editable. So we're going to check the is editable property. If it's not editable, then we're not going to do anything because we don't want to display anything. So then we're going to create an object for our form element and we're going to assign a few properties. We're going to set the description to the field alias and I'm going to set the items to an empty object, which I'll come back to in a few minutes. Next, we want to decide what type of UI control to create for each field. So the first case we're going to handle is fields that have coded value domains. So in this if activity, we're checking if the field has a domain object and if that domain object has coded values. If it does, then we're going to want to show a drop down box with the coded value domains in it. So we're going to iterate over the coded value domains. As you can see, domain.codedValues in our for each loop here. And the first thing we're going to do in here is just assign the coded value to a variable so we don't have to access the for each loop every time. And then we're going to create an object for the form item. The label is going to be the name of the coded value and the value is going to be the value of the coded value. And then we're going to set this item on our form element object. So as you can see, I'm targeting the items property of that form element object and we have to assign it a unique ID, so we're just going to use the pass of the uh, for each activity, and we're gonna call toString on it, because it has to be a string uh, ID. And we're just going to pass in the object that we just created. Next, we're going to add the dropdown list form item to our form, and we're gonna do this using the add form element activity. So we have to provide a unique ID, so we're going to use the name of the field, and we have to specify the type of uh, form element we want to use, and you should get some IntelliSense in here. We want to use the dropdown list, and we're gonna put in our form element object that we just created. So next I'm going to show you how to do a number field. So for this we have to look at the field type property of the field and in .NET this is an enumeration that's backed by integers so we just have to compare it to its integer value. Uh, so the value for a number, or sorry, an integer is 1. So we want to create a format object for our number to ensure that it appears as an integer. So to do this, we set the precision to zero, meaning no decimal places are shown, and we want to set the step to one. And next we want to set our format object that we just created on the, on the uh, form element object. So we're setting the format property on our form element object to the format object that we just created. And once again, we're going to use the add form element activity to add this to our form. So this time we're going to choose number and same thing, we're going to use the field name as the ID. 
So next I'm going to show you a string field. So the integer value of field type for a string is 7. So we're just checking for a 7. And in that case, we want to add a text area form element to our form. So this is the simplest case, just use the, using the field name again. All right, so I'm going to demo this for you in the GeoCortex mobile viewer now. So let's quickly just take a look at the JSON in the feature layer that I'm using here. So these are the fields in the feature layer, and you can see I have a string field called request status that uses some coded value domains. There's three domains in there. I've got a regular string field called description, and I've got an integer field named severity. So this, uh, the workflow that we made to show the form elements will cover all three of these fields. So let's pop open the GeoCortex mobile viewer here, and I'll show you the workflow. So this is just an extremely bare bones version of the mobile viewer that I've configured solely for the purpose of showing you this workflow. So I have the workflow on the taskbar here, and if I click on it, you'll see that I get one form element for each of the fields that uh, are editable. So I've got my status uh, element, which is a drop down box. I can choose the value. Um, the description field is just a string field, and the severity field is an integer. So if I type in that, I can see that it's an integer and I can step up by integer values. And that's how we create a dynamic form for uh, a given layer. Thanks for watching.